Welcome to special edition of St. Jude in 5. I am Sergeant Matthews, your host for today. During the past few weeks, we've seen a significant increase of COVID-19 cases due to the new variant Omicron. We are joined by Dr. Harry Pellet, our Medical Director of Cardiology and Critical Care, to answer a few questions about the new variant. I know there's a lot to cover in the next five minutes, so let's begin. You ready, Harry? I am ready. Okay. So, Harry, I just want to make sure that you are qualified for this. Are you board certified? Uh, seven boards, actually. Seven Internal. boards? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Internal Which medicine, are... cardiology, critical care, geriatrics, palliative care, neurocritical care, advanced echocardiography. I'm just sweating thinking of the two boards that I took. I don't know how you managed to do all these boards. Plus, you have an additional qualification. You are the chair of PNT of the entire Providence system? Yes. Okay. A- and also the co-chair of the uh, system COVID response for the acute okay. care. Of all these roles that you play, what do you enjoy the most? I'd say being the medical director of critical care. I mean, especially during this time, that's been the most challenging, um, enjoyable in its complexity and trying to do what we can for people. Okay. So there's a lot of information that you have to deal with in your different roles. What do you do for fun? I have five daughters. So dealing oh. with them is the side activity. Sometimes fun. No, not always, but, but often a lot of fun. I've seen pictures of your beautiful family. Uh, Harry, you enjoy them. Very much Thank so. Thank you. So let's get started on, uh, on the main thing that we have for today, Omicron. I didn't know it was a Greek letter. Do you know all the Greek alphabets? You're a smart guy. It's all Greek to me. I okay. stick to the words. <laughs> the last we heard was Delta, and suddenly we jumped to Omicron. Why did we skip two letters? Well, the first one was new, and then people are going to think that was new, and then the other and one... You. And you was, yeah. and then the other one Z is actually a common name, so they decided it's better to skip those and go right to the Omicron. Omicron, okay. Do we know why Omicron variant spreads so rapidly? It multiplies very quickly in the nose, less so in the lungs because of its different shape. So that's that rapid spread is why it's happening so quickly. So mainly because it affects the airways, right? And that's why, to, right? And so it can spread and less the lungs. Okay. So could the spread of this variant be a good thing? If everybody's exposed to the variant, then will we get herd immunity? Uh, Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Herd immunity is only if you get to like 95% and there's not enough of spread of the variant. There are not enough people vaccinated. So bottom line is this will not go away by people just getting the disease, unfortunately. And the spread is not a good thing because there's so much morbidity. I think people don't go to work. And uh, people end up in the urgent care, so the spread cannot be too good for the society as a whole. Uh, Correct. And a small percentage of people are getting seriously ill. So even though it's not as dangerous as the first one, it's much more dangerous than the common flu. Okay. So what are the symptoms of Omicron, and is it different from the other variants like Delta and Beta that we've had? It's usually more like the common cold. People are not getting the loss of smell or the loss of taste like they did before. Okay. And, uh, you know, we see them presenting like flu-like symptoms. Uh, is it dif- Can you differentiate? You can't really tell. So unfortunately, that is why you really need to do the testing to know. Okay. So, you know, we've treated a lot of patients in our hospital, St. Jude, inpatients. And, you know, there's a lot more out in the community. And Omicron is out there so much. What is the new treatments available for Omicron? So there are a couple of new treatments available. There's a different type of monoclonal antibody, sortivimab, which is in short supply, which is very different than the other monoclonal antibodies. There's also an oral agent called Paxlovid, which is not yet commonly available, but hopefully in the next couple of weeks will be um, available. They both have to be started with ideally within the first five days of symptoms. So I just want to talk about monoclonal antibodies. You know, we had some monoclonal antibodies that we were giving, but we are out of those. We have a new monoclonal antibody, which is pretty effective. Yes, it seems to be about 85% effective in reducing the need for coming to the hospital. Again, it's only for the outpatients, not for the inpatients. And same thing with Paxlovid, which is a five-day course of pills, which seems to have a dramatic efficiency, 85%, you would say? That same sort of thing, very effective. Any downsides with that? It does interact with a lot of other medications, so the doctor has to be careful and go over your medication list. And the key is to get it within five days of the onset of symptoms for it to be effective, but uh, then you won't get hospitalized generally if you take the pills. Correct. Okay. So do we have any estimates or prediction on this surge? When is it going to end? 
So like anything else, we don't really know, but based on the data from every place else, it seems like this, the peak of the surge may well end within within a couple of weeks. We may get there. Oh, okay. So, you know, how do we protect ourselves in the community from not necessarily from Omicron, but any of these infectious things, including flu? There's a new disease which they call fluorona. You want to say how we can protect ourselves from this? The most important thing is vaccination, and especially with COVID, is booster. You know, it's been the way we've dealt with viruses for 30, 40 years. So the most important thing is vaccination. In the beginning, we weren't quite sure how important the booster was, but the booster is clearly um, essential for the Omicron. So the most important thing is for people to just get it, and especially if they have loved ones at home who are at high risk, is to urge them to get the vaccination and the booster. So one of the questions is now we're giving a third dose. How long will it last? We don't really know, you know, right now. We have to have some humility that we just simply don't know. Uh, But again, clearly it seems to be working. Some countries are giving a fourth shot. Um, Will that become the standard here? We just don't know yet. So we have to kind of get used to the flu vaccine, uh, you know, frequency, like once a year. Is that what you're... And that's, what it may, be? and that's what it may be, that if people really want to be maximal protection, just like you get a flu vaccine on an annual basis, that just becomes what COVID may. So I saw something in the news today that uh, or a few weeks ago that Walter Reed announced a pan-coronavirus that is effective against all variants. Is that a feasibility sooner or later that that the variants won't be a problem and you can prevent it? Hopefully not as much. There are um, vaccines which are targeting different parts of the uh, virus which don't change as often. And that is the hope that um, we're not there yet, but there is a hope that we can um, not have to go through all these changes. So that is optimism? Yes, 100%. Okay, 100%. Okay. So before closing today's episode of St. Jude and Five, I want to thank our caregivers and our physicians. The entire St. Jude leadership team would like to express a deepest appreciation and gratitude for all that you do. We are deeply inspired by your dedication to our patients and your willingness to help your fellow caregivers whenever needed. That's it for today's episode of St. Jude in 5. Thank you, Dr. Pellet, for joining us. In the meantime, St. Jude, stay strong.